Welcome to another video. Let's talk about one of the most important concepts in linear algebra. It is the linear independence of a set. And let me just tell you what that means by reading what I've already written on the board. It simply means that a set is linearly independent if no element in the set is a linear combination of other elements in the set, which means two members of the set cannot gang up together to get rid of one, or gang up together to duplicate another. Look at this. If I give you this set, the set of x squared, x, and 1, I know this set is a linearly independent set because it is impossible to get rid of this one by just manipulating x squared and x. It doesn't matter how much you do as far as you're doing linear combinations, no squaring, no multiplication, just addition or subtraction of scalar multiples. So even if you have 1000 of this plus this, it will never give you one or minus one. So no matter how many of these you add up to this, you will never get x squared. That's the idea of linear independence. And why do we think this is important? It's important because matrices or linear algebra is about efficiency. You want to be efficient in what you do. You don't want to waste time. You don't want to waste space. So if I give you a set like this that has x squared, has x, has 3x squared, has minus 2, if I give you this, is this set linearly independent? Now, this looks like a tougher question. Well, these two can never gang up to get rid of this guy because this guy here has the number two. These two cannot generate two. Can these two gang up to get rid of x? No because these two can never generate x. Do you see the idea of linear independence? Okay, now, if one thing is not a duplicate or a linear combination of the other two, the set is linearly independent. So this set is linearly independent, this set is linearly independent. Let's take one more. What if I gave you x squared plus 3x minus 5, I gave you x squared, I gave you x, and I gave you 1. Do you think there can be a conspiracy among these three to get rid of this guy? <laughs> yes, because all I need, I need three of these. I mean, I need one of this. I need three of these and I need negative five of these. Once we gang up, we have duplicated this and we can get rid of it. So that's the idea of linear, in linear independence. So this set, you can say this element is a linear combination of these three and therefore the set is linearly dependent and in most cases not reliable so sometimes you have to do some computation to be able to know whether a set is linearly independent or linearly dependent and that's why we have these two sets one of them is actually linearly independent and one of them is linearly dependent but you have to do the math to know which one is which so let's start the math. So this is how we write the question. We say, is this set linearly independent, Li? Because linearly independent is quite a long um, um, expression. So, but we can say Li, is it? How do you know? This is how you start. You always assume that one of them is a linear combination of the rest of the set. Okay, that's a good strategy. So I'm going to assume that the first one is a linear combination of the other two. So we would say that let the first one, which is three, four, one, be a linear combination of these two, which means I can multiply this by a, one minus two, one, plus I multiply this by b, I need minus two minus one, one. Okay, so this is what I get. I just need to know whether A and B exist. If you can find A and find B as scalars, 
then it means it's a linear, is, um, a linear combination of these two, and therefore this set is linearly dependent. But if A and B do not exist, it means that this is not a linear combination of these two, and therefore the set is linearly independent. Now, because we're dealing with vectors or matrices, you have to deal with corresponding entries. Remember, when you're adding matrices, or vectors, you have to look at the corresponding entries. So the first here corresponds to the first, corresponds to the first. So we're gonna say that three corresponds to a times one, which is going to be equal to a, plus b times minus two, that's minus two b. That's your first equation. Then you go to the middle one, four, corresponds to minus two a, and corresponds to minus b. And the third one, 1, corresponds to A and corresponds to B, plus B. Oh, nice. Now, quickly, you can do your quick math. There's nothing complicated. It's always a system of linear equations. I know I can eliminate B from here if I add these two equations together. So if I add these two together, what do I get? This B will be gone. If I add this to this, I'm going to get minus A. If I add this to this, I'm going to get... 5. So I can say minus a is equal to 5, which implies that a is equal to negative 5. Nice. So I have a is negative 5. In my head, a exists, but you don't know yet until you go find what b is. So we're going to look at the equation we have not used since it is consistent for all three. Um, or let's find b. Let's find b from here. This simply means from here, 1 is equal to minus 5 plus b, which implies that b is equal to 1 plus 5, which is 6. Nice. So a is negative 5, b is 6. Well, we have used these two equations to find these answers. Let's go plug these two in in an equation we didn't use and see if it is justified. So, check. 3 is equal to a minus 2b. So 3 will be equal to, what is a? We said a is minus 5 minus, what is b? b is 6, so minus 2 times 6. Okay, so it means 3 equals, this doesn't look right. This is 12 and this is 5, that's 17, negative 17. Uh, this doesn't make any sense. 3 can never be equal to negative 17, so the a and b that we computed do not exist. Okay, so this is how you write your conclusion. A, okay, here you can write in front of it, say, inconsistent. Some people say impossible. <laughs> inconsistent. And because the two sides are inconsistent, you say a and b do not exist. Therefore, set A is linearly independent. I'm going to stop there. Too long a word. Now, let's check set B and see if it is linearly independent. I already told you that one of them is and the other is not. But let's see what we get. Before we continue testing B, remember that these sets that I have tested could be the columns of a matrix. I forgot to mention that. They could be the rows of a matrix. They could be the vectors in a, in, in a, a vector space. They could be a system of equations. They could be um, functions. They could be anything you can think. They could be differential equations. They could be partial differentials. They could be partial derivatives, rather. So whatever you need to use matrices for, for you to be able to make quick and absolute judgment, you need to test whether one is a duplicate of some others or whether what you have is just cool like that. Okay, so let's test this one. The same strategy. We're going to say that negative 2, um, 0, 3, let is equal to a times 1, 3, 0 plus b times 2, 4, negative 1. We want to see whether a 
and B exist. Both of them must exist. So let's go. We have negative two will be equal to A plus two B. That's the first one. Second one, zero must be equal to three A and the middle plus four B. And um, the next one is gonna be three must be equal to zero A. So we don't write anything here. We just write plus and this would be minus B. Oh, because clearly we can say that this implies that B equals minus three. And if B equals minus three, let's go plug it in here. We know that zero from here, we know that zero will be equal to three A plus four times minus three. 12, which implies three A is equal to 12 which implies a is equal to 12 over three, which is equal to four. So right now we got b equals minus three and a equals four. We take these two, go plug it into the equation we haven't used and see if there's some kind of consistency. We're gonna say minus two is equal to a, what is a? a is four plus two times b, what is b? b is negative three. So we have negative two equals four minus six. Looks like that's correct. Minus two equals minus two, and this is consistent. Therefore, a and b actually exist. a exists, b exists, so we can say, let's write our conclusion here. Since a equals four and b equals negative three. We know that set b is linearly dependent. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.